Okay, so let's get started. We are starting today with statistics. And as you all must be aware by now, statistics is part of paper two. And it's generally the first couple of questions in our exam. So in trials and um, finals, we can expect probably around about um, 20 marks on this section. And here we really want to get 20 out of 20. Okay, as much as, as possible, because these questions are supposed to be the easier questions in our paper. Again, there's a lot of work from grade 11 that's important for us. So that's why today I wanted to revise with you how to calculate the mean standard deviation, how to draw a box and whisker plot, and how to determine whether something is actually an outlier or not. Okay, so let's get cracking. Um, what I have managed to do is download this emulator. Can you see the calculator on screen? Is it visible? Is it? Oh, good. All right, that's fine. Because in the previous class, I just had some issues trying to show everybody. Good, 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 good. Okay, all right. So it's just there so that you can see what we're doing. This is not difficult, it's just long. All right, but once you learn how to um, use the calculator here, or I remind you how to use the calculator here, it shouldn't be too difficult. Remember what we're doing here is revision of grade 11 work. This is stuff that we're already supposed to know. I am gonna try and move through it quite quickly. Um, but if you feel that I'm just going too fast, then you're welcome to tell me to slow down. All right, so the question that we're gonna look at this evening is um, information about the Comrades Marathon. So that's something that all of us know very well because it gets run every year between Durban and Peter Maritzburg here in South Africa. All right, so the table summarizes the athletes who've achieved the most wins to date. All right, and there are 12 athletes there, a mixture of men and ladies that have all won the um, uh, Comrades Marathon uh, two times or more than that. All right, so the first thing that they ask us to do, as they often do in these sorts of questions, is they want us to calculate the mean, right? So on your calculator, and you're going to look at my emulator on the screen, and you're going to follow along on your own calculator to calculate the mean, all right? The first thing that we have to do is press our mode button. Then we go into option number uh, three for statistics, I'm going to press a three. For the mean and for standard deviation, we choose option number one, variance. So I press one. And now I want to enter in the number of wins. Okay, so I'm going to press four. And then to enter it, you press equals. And then five, and then equals, and then enter all the data. Okay, and it, it should look like that after you've entered everything in. All right, so it's on line 13 because we've entered 12 pieces of data. After we have entered these 12 pieces of data, we then do this. Okay, so you press AC, shift, one. Okay, and then we want to go to option number four for variance. So I'm going to press four and it's going to bring up these options. Option number two is the mean. And X with a, a, a line over it, we say X bar, that is the symbol for the mean. So if I want the mean, I press two and then I've got to press equals. So my mean rounded to two decimal places is 4,58. So when I write, the emulator is going to disappear, but I'm going to put the emulator, well, put the answer down. So X bar equals 4,58. Now, I know the next question is about the mode, but it's silly to go and enter all this information again to then go and ask, answer the question here in E, calculate the standard deviation for this data. So what I'm going to do is at the same time, I'm just going to write down what my standard deviation was. So on your calculator, you would now have to go through the process of finding the standard deviation by pressing AC, shift, one, four, and now you're going to press option three. 
All right, and round it to two decimal places, we would get 1,85. Okay, so our standard deviation is 1,85. All right, is everybody okay with that? Uh, Seatley, what do you mean you only see eight athletes? Okay, there are 12 names here in the table on the left. Okay, there are 12 names, there are 12 athletes. You only see eight. Um, okay, I'm going to ask um, Yulinda, will you just speak to Seathle, please? Uh, yes, Seathle Sakeni, gonna... because. Yes, okay. I'll All do right. that. All right, that's fine. Okay, so Lissetti, after option one, what do we press? Okay, so you pressed AC shift one. To get the standard deviation, you'd press option three. Okay, so AC shift one. One, option four for variance. Okay, so option two here is the mean. Option three is standard deviation. Okay, so that's the symbol for a standard deviation, Jude. Okay, so it's it's sigma x. That symbol, um, let me show you here. I'm going to have to write again. So this symbol over here, this is not a six. That's actually a sigma. Did you know that that symbol, this one is the capital. You all know that one. It's okay, Jude. I'm just, I'm just explaining it to you. No worries. Okay. So that's a baby sigma. Okay. So sigma X is the symbol for standard deviation. All right. Everybody happy? Can I move on with the rest of the questions? Sorry, I'm speaking to Sithe, but Sithe is not responding at this moment. Okay, all right. I'm not there. Okay. All right. So, so iPhone, you are writing it down because it's silly for us to go and calculate it all over again to go through this whole process when we answer question E. So they should have actually had question E after question A. All right, but it, it's just the order of the questions here that's a little bit silly. That's why. Okay, if you were doing an exam question, they wouldn't do that. They would have the they would have the standard deviation as the next question. All right, does that make sense to you? Just because the textbook that I took this from um, didn't didn't put them one after the other. All right, so moving on then, the word mode. The mode is the piece of data that what? What does the word mode mean? Okay, so it occurs the most, correct. Okay, so the mode is the one that occurs the most often. All right, your mean, what's another word for mean? When you calculate the mean, another, another term, another word for the mean. The average, good, well done, the average. Good, and the one that is in the middle, what do I call that? The piece of data that's in the middle, the median, good, well done. Okay, so the median is the piece of data that is in the middle. So what is the mode for the number of wins per athlete in this particular case? Indeed, Miss Cindy. Okay, so five, the number five appears four times. Good. Now they want us to draw a box and whisker plot. Okay, so if you recall, when we draw a box and whisker plot, we have to have a five number summary. 
All right, so our five number summary. Sorry, I just want to move all this stuff down because I always never give myself enough room ever, ever, ever. Okay, so a five number summary consists of five numbers. Can anybody tell me? There we go. It's a huatso. All right, so do you guys want to do this yourselves? Do you want to do the five number summary? I'm happy to do that. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you do the five number summary. And then you can DM me your answers for your five number summary. So as Sechel Fatso has reminded us, it consists of our minimum, our lower quartile, our median, our upper quartile, and our maximum. Ah, oh, okay. Hello, just give me one second. I'm just okay. Come, hello, go for it. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, come, hello. So, um, I have a question. I came in a bit late and I'm, I'm a bit behind. Um, All right. So we're just answering these questions. We've calculated the mean. We've written down um, the mode for the number of wins per athlete. And at the moment, everybody is busy with question C. So you guys are doing the five number summary that we're going to use to draw our box and whisker plot. Um, okay. So the, the confusion I have, ma'am, is that mm -hmm. um, I need to calculate the mean, but it's giving me 5.5 .5 instead of 4.58. All right, that's fine. Everybody else, you carry on with a five number summary because it is a little bit of work. Um, yeah, so you have to put the numbers in order first. So there's a little bit of work there in calculating this five number summary. It's not difficult, but there is a little bit of work. And Kamuhelo, I will take you through the process again. Look at what I have discovered. I can do this on screen. I've got an emulator. I'm so very, very pleased with myself. So this is what you would do um, to calculate the um the mean all right let me just get my calculator into the correct mode okay so what you would do is this all right on your calculator you're going to press the mode button then you're going to press option three for statistics and choose option number one okay then we're going to put in all these pieces of data so the four the five the nine the seven and you press equals after each one okay come so four, five, nine, seven, three, five, three, five, three, two, four, five, like so. Okay. Then you press AC shift one and you choose option four and then you should choose two and then you should get the same answer that we're getting four comma five, eight. 
Okay, come hello. All right, ma'am, I'm working on it. All right. I got it, ma'am. Oh, good. All right, I'm so pleased. There we go, Afense, that's perfect. Good job, well done. Sehawu, lovely, nice, excellent. Both of you have sent me the correct five number summary. Good job. Okay, so you can draw your box and whisker plots now, both of you. Remember when we draw a box and whisker plot, we have to draw it over a ruler. Okay, so normally they would give us a scale but if they don't we would have to draw one ourselves which is what we're going to have to do in this case indeed amathle quite right Is this let's have a look? Sure, that's fine. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There's the table. I was busy drawing the box and whisker plot. There you go. Okay, it's a chofatso. Good, that is correct. Nice. Right, so you can start drawing your box and whisker plot. Okay, so what we should have by now, no worries, Penga. Yes, Mbali, that's lovely. Well done. You guys are doing this beautifully. Let's see, Amathe. That's it. Good, Amatli. Well done. Okay, so two is our minimum, nine is our maximum. Our median is four and a half, our lower quartile was three, and our upper quartile was five. Okay, is everybody okay with those values? We know how to calculate them. Any questions on that? If not, then I'm just going to go straight. Katleho, go for it, Katleho. And mute and speak, please. Um, hi, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Ma'am, how is it three and five? Because aren't we supposed to like, because it's like the number that we're supposed to divide, ma'am, it's even. Aren't we supposed to add the two last numbers and then divide it by two? Okay. Am I wrong? You, 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 no, 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 you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So what would have happened was this. Okay. So just very quickly, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that and I'll just do it over here. Right. You're not wrong. So two is the smallest. And then you had three and three. Are there any other threes? Another three over there. And then we had two fours. And we have four fives. One, two, three, four. And then there was a seven and a nine. I just want to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. All right. So Katleho, very quickly, your median, one, two, three, four, five, six, your median lies between four and five. So that's why to calculate the median, we would have said four plus five divided by two, which is where the four and a half comes from. So from the four down to the two, that is your lower half. So your lower quartile lies in between those two. Okay, so it's these six numbers here that are in the lower half. So everybody was saying three plus three 
divided by two, which gives us three. And in the same way, your upper half is the green from the five to the nine. So your upper quartile lies in between there. So that would have been five plus five over two, which was where the five comes from. Okay, Katleho? Hopefully that, that clears that up. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you, ma'am. I just realized Good. that I subtracted, ma'am, instead of adding and then dividing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. All right. That's no problem at all. Okay. So now what we would do is in terms of our box and whisker plot, everybody, is um, I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 like so we would put lines over our minimum our quartiles and our maximum okay so I'm going to put a line over sorry I've put a little bit close here haven't I that was a bit silly of me okay so I'd put a line over my minimum a line over my lower quartile a line over my median a line over my upper quartile, and then you draw a box around the quartiles, and that's the box part. Then I'm going to put a line over my maximum, get a ruler. Obviously, I'm not doing this with a ruler, which is a bit naughty of me, and there are the whiskers. Okay, so there is our box and whisker plot. Okay, Lucejo, I will come back to that. Um, I just want to uh, answer these questions again and then give the others something to do and then I'll show you again how to calculate the mean on the calculator. All right, so we've calculated the mean, we've done the mode, we've drawn a box and whisker plot from the five number summary. So remember everybody, if they don't give you a um, ruler, you have to draw your box and whisker plot over a ruler. It doesn't mean anything otherwise. Okay, now they want us to just to comment on the distribution um, of the data in terms of skewness. So what would we say? How is this data skewed, Matrix? How is this data skewed? Okay. So Shasana says to the left. Okay, so there's a few different answers coming in here. The, the tail is on the right hand side. Okay, so it is skewed to the right. Okay, which we, we, we would refer to as positively skewed. Okay, so you could either say it's skewed to the right all positively skewed. Okay, because that's where our tail is. Okay, positively skewed, our tail is to the right hand side. Now, question E, we've already done. Okay, they should have asked us that after we calculated the mean instead of asking us to do it all the way down there. But anyway, we've got one standard deviation from the mean. We know what one standard deviation is. Yes, Shasana. So it's based on um, where your tail is. Okay, so if there's a big gap or big um, tail, big, big, the line is longer from your median to your maximum, then your data is skewed to the right. Okay, if, if the line is longer from your median to your minimum, then the data is skewed to the left. Okay. All right, let's do part F. This is a question that comes up quite frequently. Here they have asked us, how many athletes lie outside the first or one standard deviation of the mean? Okay, so for question F, does anybody know how to do this? Before I tell you, does anybody know how to calculate the number of athletes lying outside the first standard deviation? Does anyone know the method 
that we use for this. That's one of them, correct? Sihawu. So as Sihawu said, you've got to take the mean. Okay, then that's a good thing that we're practicing this. Good, yes. And Kaniso and Sihawu have both got the right answer. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to take the mean and we have to subtract one standard deviation. So we would say 4,58 minus 1,85, that would give us 2,73. Additionally, we have to take the mean and we have to add one standard deviation. So this would be 4,58 plus 1,85. And that gives us 6,43. So these values, the 2.73 and the 6.43 are our bounds. 2.73 is our lower bound. And 6.43 is our upper bound. Now, they've said how many athletes lie outside of this, right? So because it says outside, we want to go and count how many people, let's just delete this so that we can see this a little bit easier. How many people are smaller than 2.73? How many people are smaller than 2.73? It's only this person over here, Maria Buck. She's on two wins. That's smaller than 2.73. How many people are bigger than 6.43? How many people are bigger than 6.43? Well, it's got to be Bruce Fordyce on nine wins and Elena Nergilieva on seven wins. Okay, so outside means smaller than the 2.73 or bigger than the 6.43. Okay, exactly. So therefore, there are three athletes. So there are three athletes that are outside one standard deviation of the mean. All right, so they could also ask us how many athletes lie inside one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so just make sure that you read the question very carefully. All right, so how many athletes outside one standard deviation of the mean? In this case, it is three. All right, are we all good? Can I move on to the next thing? Any questions? Seatley, go for it. You've raised your hand, Seatley. Hi, ma'am. Hi, I don't Seatley. know if you can hear me, but um, I can. Um, can you please explain? Can you please explain F for me again, please? All right. <clears throat> I'll go through F again quickly. Um, they want us to determine the number of athletes that lie outside one standard deviation of the mean, okay? The first standard deviation interval. So there's two things that we need to do. We need to add one standard deviation to our mean, and we need to subtract one standard deviation from our mean, okay? So our mean was 4.58. So we subtracted 1.85, and that meant that our lower bound was 2.73. So anybody who won less than 2.73 times would be below one standard deviation of the mean. When we add a standard deviation to the mean, we get 6.43. So anybody who wins comrades more than 6.43 times lies outside one standard deviation on the upper side. Okay, and then you've got to go back and count. How many people are less than 2.73? There was one person. How many people are bigger than 6.43? There were two people. So that makes three people in, to in total. Okay, one below and two above. Okay, they are outside one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, on to question G. 
they've asked us, why is Bruce Fordyce's number of wins an outlier? Give a mathematical reason to justify your answer. So again, like with um, calculating one standard deviation from the mean, there is a specific method that we have to use here to determine whether something is actually an outlier or not. We can't just look at it and say, oh yes, it's an outlier because it's different. There's actually a mathematical calculation that needs to take place. Does anybody know what that calculation is? Does anyone remember how to calculate whether something is an outlier? No. So for two standard deviations, you would just multiply the standard deviation by two. Okay, now let no letando. Ah, oh, there we go. So Tachofatso, you're on the right track, but it's not a hundred percent correct, but you're right. You iPhone 2, you also you saying some parts of it, but not everything. Okay, so again, something can be an outlier when it's much smaller, or it can be an outlier when it's much bigger. So if it's much smaller, what we would have to do is any value that is the lower quartile minus one and a half times the interquartile range. So this value, whatever it is, has to be smaller than this. Okay, that value has to be smaller than <clears throat> the lower quartile minus one and a half uh, times the interquartile range, interquartile range, or it can be greater. Okay, in which case our value, whatever it is, has to be bigger than the upper quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range. That's it. Okay, that's that's the method that we have to use. So here they were talking about Bruce Fordyce. Okay, he won it nine times. Okay, so this has to be the greater than, not the smaller than. Okay, so our upper quartile, we already know what that is. Our upper quartile is five, isn't it? So we've got the number five and we want to add one and a half times our interquartile range. Our interquartile range is our upper quartile, you guys know this, minus our lower quartile, isn't it? Okay, so it's five minus three, which would be two. So we would work out the value of five plus one and a half times two. What do we get? We get? We get eight, exactly. We get eight. So any number bigger than eight is an outlier. Okay, so nine is greater then the upper quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range. Okay, so therefore Bruce Fordyce, Fordyce is an outlier. Let me just move that down. Bruce Fordyce is an outlier. Okay, so make sure you learn these methods. Okay, how to calculate um, an outlier and how to calculate um, one standard deviation from the mean in both directions. Okay, <clears throat> any questions on that? Everybody okay? All right. Okay. And then we're not going to worry about this because we've already drawn the box and whisker plot. It's a bit of a silly question. I don't know. Okay. So, Pinga, um, you and somebody else had also asked me just to go through the mean again. So, I'm going to do that now and I'm going to give everybody else a chance to answer some questions. Yes. One and a half is part of the formula. Goliso. Okay. It is. Okay. So, the rest of us are going to work on this question. Okay. 
and Pinga and I think it was, I can't remember who it was. Somebody else was asking me how we would calculate what the mean um, was, okay? So, um, how are we going to do this? Oh, it was you, Lesejo, okay. So, Lesejo and Penga, when you want to, so everybody else carry on with the questions. Carry on with question number one, ignore me. I'm talking to Penga and Lesejo right now. Okay, unless if you really want to listen, you're more than welcome. Um, all right, hold on one second. So shift nine, three equals AC. Okay, so we've reset our, hang on a second. Okay, so Pinga and Lesejo. The first thing that you want to do is you want to press the mode button. Okay, then you go in here and you choose option number three. And for mean and standard deviation, you choose option number one. Okay, we will work with option number two, but not, not in this lesson. Okay, so option number one, and now you would need to put in your values. Right, so now, unfortunately, I've got the other information on the screen at the moment, but let me just make up some values. Okay, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'd enter whatever values I'd been given. So in the case of the question that's on the screen, I'd enter the 15, the 29, the 33, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to put in different numbers because I don't want to do that question. So I'm going to put in 12 and then to enter it, I'd press equals. And then I'm going to put in 10 and then I'm going to put in 18 and then I'm going to put in 15 and then I'm going to put in 13 and then I'm going to put in 15 again. And I'm just going to stop there. Okay, so you put in your values. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then, well done, Penga. And then you would press AC shift one. You choose option number four for variance. And then inside of there, option two is your mean. Option three is your standard deviation. So if you want the mean, you'd press two and you'd press equals. That would be your mean. If you then wanted, once you'd written that down, remember to round it to two decimal places. If you then wanted your standard deviation, you'd press AC, shift one, four, three for standard deviation equals, and there's your standard deviation. Okay, Lesejo, okay, Penga. Oh, option number one is the number of pieces of data. Okay, so the N is the number of pieces of data that you've got. Okay, but you'd know that. So, so it would be in the case of this, if we put this data in, if you chose option number one, it would give you 15. If you chose option one in the previous one, it would give you 12. Okay. All right, no problem. Okay, so everybody's doing 1.1 to 1.4. And then we're going to mark that quickly and then have a look at something else. Okay, so you guys are doing question number one on your screen, and we're going to mark it now when you're done. Um, Penga, the median, it can be calculated on the calculator, but you, you wouldn't do it that way, all right, like you would the mean. Um, you would have to sort the data yourself if it wasn't sorted. So in the case of the previous question on the comrades, the data wasn't in order. But for this question over here and question number one, the data is in order. Okay, so see Claire, when you say you want me to scroll down, where do you want me to go? Because the question's in the middle of the screen. Okay, so Pinga, it's, it's in order already. You just need to identify the median.
Okay, Miss Cindy, that's good. There is one more question, Miss Cindy. There it is. 1.1.5. 1. 1. So you can do that one too, Miss Cindy, and then we're going to talk about the answers. Um, Amatle, I will go through one. I will go through all of this with you guys, just giving everybody a chance to finish. But I will explain 1.1.4 1. 1. and how to do that. Okay, I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes and then I'll start going through the answers with you guys. Okay, Trish, well done. All right, nice, Trish. Beautifully summarized, thank you. Okay, so Kamohelo, okay, so that's great. Kamohelo, your answer for number four and Trisha's answer for number four are different. Okay, just be careful, make sure that you guys read it carefully. Here it's within one standard deviation of the mean, not outside. Okay, so it's different to the previous question. I mean, same method, but they're asking within and not outside of. Okay. All right, so I think most people are finished. So let's go through the answers. So the data was in order um, for us. There's our minimum. And here's our maximum. There are 15 pieces of data. So if we identify the eighth piece of data, okay, see how you're getting the same as Trish, okay. All right, Kamkhelo, we're going to talk about that now. So if there are 15 pieces of data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighth piece of data is 55. There's seven numbers smaller than 55 and seven numbers bigger than 55. So the median, as a lot of you sent through, which is correct, that would be 55, the one that is in the middle, okay? So one mark for that. Then calculating the mean, we would use our calculators and you should have got 55 comma two. There would be two marks for that. Did you guys get that as well? Okay, standard deviation. Again, you would have used your calculator the way that I showed you. You would have got 20, 50, two marks for that. So can you see how here in this exam question, they went straight from the mean to the standard deviation. They didn't have a whole bunch of other questions in between. That's it, Miss Cindy, quite right. Okay, so now 1.1.4. Was it Lise? Who was asking me to explain this? Was it Kamohelo, Lisejo? Oh, Amatle, Amatle, Amatle. Okay, so Amatle, listen carefully now. All right, the number of innings that lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So you have to use that method I showed you earlier, where you would have to take the mean and minus one standard deviation. So that would be 55, 2 minus 20, 5-0. And then that means 34, 7 would be your lower bound. OK, 
Okay, and then again, you're going to take one standard, you're going to take your mean, and you're going to add one standard deviation. Okay, so now we're going to get 55,2 plus 20,50. All right, so now our upper bound is at 75,7. Okay, so now here they've said within, within, not outside of, but within. So how many numbers lie between, Amartya, how many numbers lie between 34.7 and 75.7? How many numbers lie in between? So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and can we include 76? No, because it's too big. Okay, so there are eight numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So eight out of 15 are within one standard deviation of the mean. So now to end of question 114, you would calculate eight out of 15 times by a hundred to get a percentage. Okay. And that's why we should get 53,33%. Okay, there we go. All right, so iPhone, you said seven lie within. Why am I getting eight? Have I made a mistake? No, one, two, No, they three, corrected four. and said it's sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 So you actually got it right. All right. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. So three marks for this. So they would give us a mark for obviously uh, that one, that one, and then our answer like so. Okay, so now Nolotando sent me an answer for the skewness. How did you work out whether it was positively or negatively skewed? What did you guys do? To comment on the skewness, what did you do? <coughs> How did you do that? So we don't have a box and whisker plot to look at. So how would we work out whether the data was skewed to the left? or skewed to the right. How would we do that? Okay, but it's only one mark, right? iPhone 2, it's only one mark. There we go, Amatle, you're correct. Okay, so other people use the mean, the interquartile range. No, it's none of those things. All right, remember whether the data is skewed or not is a comparison of the distance from the median to the minimum and from the median to the maximum. Okay, that's what you are comparing for skewness. Okay, so in this case, our median is 55. Our minimum was 15. So that's 40. Our maximum is 88. 88 minus 55 leaves us with 33. So where is the tail bigger? To the left or to the right of the median? Is the tail bigger to the left? or to the right? Yes, let's see how it will. Exactly. So it's bigger to the left because 40 is bigger than 33. All right, so this data is skewed to the left. Skewed left or negatively. Okay, so you are comparing your median with your minimum 
or your maximum with your median. Okay, whichever one is bigger, that's where the data is skewed. Okay, because that means the tail will be longer. Okay, so wherever the tail is longer, that's where it is skewed. Okay, and obviously that would be one mark for that information. Okay, any questions, Matrix? No, everybody all good. All right. <clears throat> so we've got seven minutes left. Um, let's have a look at this question. This is a box and whisker plot that was given to us. Let's just talk about this. And that should probably take us up to the end of our lesson. Okay, so the weekly water consumption in kiloliters of 75 households is shown in the box and whisker diagram below. So now they're giving us the box and whisker plot. We can see the minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. Okay, what they want us to do is write down the median weekly water consumption. Good, Kamakhero, quite right. Okay, the median weekly water consumption is 5,2 kiloliters. Good job. Okay, there we go. Calculate the interquartile range. Nice, easy question. So for 112, there we go. We would calculate the interquartile range by taking 7 and minusing 2,8. And that would give us 5,2. Okay, two marks, sub in and answer. Okay, maybe they would even give us full marks on answer only. All right, comment on the skewness of the data. What do you think, guys? Is the data skewed to the left or is it skewed to the right? Looks pretty asymmetr uh, asymmetrical to me. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's very, very slightly skewed to the right, but I would say it is pretty much Why are you saying that the interquartile range is 4.2? Unless, am I just stupid? Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's 4.2. You're quite right, Tsekhofatso. And someone else. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is 4.2. Sorry, guys. Yeah. There we go. All right. So comment on the skewness of the data. I'm going to say that it is. Oh, it's very slightly skewed to the right. So slightly skewed right. Okay, not a nice question actually, um, but all right. Now, next question. With the exception of one household, the water consumption at all the other households was exactly the same in the second week as it was in the first week. At a particular household, a burst water pipe resulted in the water consumption being in excess of 8.9 kiloliters. What effect would the burst water pipe have on the standard deviation of the data for the second week? Provide a reason for your answer. What do you think? What does standard deviation mean? What are we actually talking about when we talk about standard deviation?
What does standard deviation actually represent, guys? Let's go, Matrix. We're nearly there. What does standard deviation represent? Not sure. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so what is standard deviation a measure of? Interesting question, isn't it? Okay, so standard deviation is how far the points are. There we go. Okay, so so variance is the square of standard deviation, Kamachelo. But what it represents is how far the points are from the mean. How far the points are from the mean. So what do you think would happen to the standard deviation in the second week? What do you guys think? So the burst water pipe. Why is it increasing? Oh, you're then just doing the poll. I thought while they're still thinking, they might as well. <laughs> they, they, can, they can answer. <laughs> okay, so answer the poll. Yes, not a tundra. In the second week, the one of the households, a water pipe burst and the consumption was in excess of 8.9 kiloliters. Yes, cut le hole. Ma'am, I think it will increase because the median is going to increase too but the what's this the maximum is going to be higher if that makes sense ma'am okay but how so, is that going okay fair enough fair enough your mean would be bigger absolutely okay but are all the points going to be further away from the mean is it going to have an effect on the standard deviation All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna give you guys the answer to this question, all right? I want you to go and have a look at your textbook, some information, and I'm gonna start our next lesson talking about this, all right? Whether it is actually going to have an effect on the standard deviation or not, okay? 